Ich habe mich sehr stark daran erinnert, dass ich mich sehr stark daran erinnere, 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 dass ich mich sehr stark They're all over the world in ways that Portland style and Seattle style grab into Kansas City in ways that Providence can do in Sunday morning, which is the same thing. And it's great to see in the way that the international and local communities are projected into this. The soup grant is a grassroots model for funding small to medium sized care projects for the community grants. The basic formula is that a group of people come together to share a need and have a useful and sort of global place. All that came from the United States as a grant of support for this project. Grant applications are accepted by Team Children Mail and Dylan, who purchased the name based on the grant used by the Homeless Youth of Yemen. The grant projects support the Big Sunday Soup and the Big City Cafe based on their individual contracts. And I think those are more or less the background of the whole piece. The Team Soup Grant generates Credit funding and sparks dialogue to help raise money and the distribution of resources within the industry and other societies. And then the environment is governmental support for experimental art practices in law and art. And private support is dictated by levels of artists and graduate foundations. Innovative and potentially funded innovations happen in small ways that are linked by the very nature of funding. We see community participation as the grant funding. Community participation and grant funding is one step in the process to speak. Applying for a grant is intensely simple and bureaucratic, and we would have encouraged all participation. This enables us to support and promote experimental, critical, and imaginative practices in the law and the art of local global funding. Uh, the Soup Grant Water Team Money Emphasis is a way to bring together the support of the community that uh, reaches beyond the purely monetary systems. We like to think that that's helping fund the work that discuss ongoing projects with these audiences and these collaborators in the uh, building. Yeah, so I continue to do underground restaurants, and currently I just did it sort of in quick succession. And then I just had one project that was developed for a couple of couple years called Dinner Discussion, which is a thing I do in my apartment generally once a month. Where I bring together mostly people in the food movement and food enthusiasts interested in good food, uh, and then generally um, socially engaged, politically engaged artists, um, particularly artists, you know, non land residents and artists, but other types of artists as well, and researchers and others. And then it's, it's, uh, just sort of these little dinners I do, they can be like five people or ten people. Is sort of to bring uh, people, people in the food world, and people in the art and arts together that would be interested in doing each other, hopefully forming a collaboration down the line at some point. And it's, uh, it's just it's sort of an experimental thing that's evolved over the last few months. I think that I've been doing it for a while now. It started in Chicago in the last few months, and I just did one in uh, Chicago and in Brooklyn and LA and Copenhagen. It's just sort of like researching and just sort of happens. So I kind of mostly on the web and I kind of just a lot of my work is around creating art that and connecting about people doing doing art around food and also like the internet itself and and even projects like Amanda and sort of like 
and those lots together in one family plot. Um, this teacher was doing work in Canada, and he was doing that as well. He was not here today, but um, and then I just kind of wanted to read um, a little a description of some some other sort of influential uh, projects that that I've been to lately. John Rubin, um, that was doing this in Germany and Pittsburgh, I think. Um, he's doing this project called Cloud Plantation, um, but I wanted to describe Cloud uh, Plantation as a takeout restaurant that only serves cuisine from countries like the United States as a conflict group. Um, each, 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 each conflict dish and information is augmented by events, performances, and discussions about the culture, politics, and issues at stake that each country will focus on. Uh, we are currently presenting the second iteration of Conflict Kitchen via the Bologna Posse, an Afghan takeout restaurant that serves a savory homemade Afghan internal food court with either pumpkin, spinach, lentils, or chili beans. Uh, we've developed a collaboration with members of the Afghan community and Bologna. Once packaged in the cart, can be done rapidly and includes interviews with Afghans both in Afghanistan and in the United States, and subjects on the Afghan food and culture, including questions like what is a family life. Food food wrappers, programming, and creative interaction with customers. Conflict Kitchen creates an authentic platform for the first person discussion of international conflict and food politics. In addition, the project introduces the work of the Caribbean Center of Culinary and Cultural Diversity in Pittsburgh, as featured leadership to focus on the Caribbean and Peninsula of African Guinea. And then another project um, that I like, which is of a similar nature, and that is uh, Enemy Kitchen. Um, which is a project that former director of Susan Bay Kitchen Development School. Um, collaborating with these Iraqi groups and other groups empowered by how U.S. food and teaches them to look at public audiences. Um, the first incarnation of the project Iraqi is cooked with a group of middle school and high school students who live in Chelsea, participate in after school and summer programming at the Hudson Field Community Center. Some of the girls live in the U.S. Army and stationed in Iraq. In preparing and then consuming the food is like a much better copy of food served by Iraqi immigrants. In this case, the touch of food as a representative of culture is not only seen in the interviews shown on CNN with the World Bank page. In uh, spring of 2012, um, they sort of did this sort of day exhibition, sort of about these kind of projects that were happening all around uh, Chicago. And uh, an enemy of peace, an enemy kitchen, um, the world food chef, will be there. Uh, Featuring different Iraqi cook every day to serve them cuisine from different regions in the country. And there's a staff there that has embedded in some of the Iraqi art who will be collecting surveys and samples. Um, yeah, and uh, I wanted to read this quote from, um, um, from Terry Cummings, who's a local uh, member of our local curator. Um, that I thought was interesting. I was reading that I don't know if you guys have ever had any Jeffrey that she was an artifact of her and it came out a few months ago. It's really interesting. Um, I kind of wanted to look all over uh, around. And uh, Terry, here's an interview with her and um, she was just kind of talking about the rise of, of uh, food art and food journalists like trying to promote that and, and sort of what, what that could be. And, it's sort of a more cynical take, maybe, to what the art could be. Um, I think there's a lack of clarity in food and art events. Uh, whenever there's a big paradigm that comes into problems, a lot of artists explore it from a creative perspective. I think that's what you're getting at. Even though the paradigm isn't new, the amount of industry that's driven in part because the dollar system is kind of loaded in that. We always assign value to food, and it's the idea that people interested in food will go to food related events and try to feed their kids about it. I don't necessarily go and spend thousands of dollars to buy something that will fill me up. Um, I thought that was interesting. Um, what else? Can you guys talk to us? Hey, thank you, Mike.
response from the agency that was stuck in a fault in some regards to funding some of the projects and collaborating with local partners. And we got this type of education that was delivered without the agency being also part of the delivery. So we started thinking about the different you know, legal options of funding that you can get instead of being funded by the agency. Um, and then in response to um, what you what you read about the Google kit, I think that's perfect to see it as just Students are the impact group who can help students otherwise to get into um, the different stages to get into math as a part of the math research. And so this is my group is a part of the common math work that they do. So I think that's a really great idea. Yeah, that's actually, I wanted to throw that out as well. So I think it's yeah, just like the students are that great idea about and then they're building it up for people. And they won't come for the art, but they will come for the food. Um, they won't pay for the art, but they'll pay for the food. Uh, so that the main interest is, yeah, but also that there's institutions that are doing it, but also some of the people that come to the students that come to the students that are really trying to do that. So, yeah, food and liquor. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious about, like, let's explore that a little bit harder. Where does that, where, where does that leave us? Where does that take us? Where, how are we navigating and negotiating with that? Um, be thinking about that. I mean, to me, it feels a little bit like that. Uh, once again, we're giving ourselves a new set of starting assumptions. Uh, you think I saw on that? That's it. I don't feel like the teacher is doing that. I feel like people are coming here for engagement with art, and they want to have a sense of participation. I think what a lot of our institutions and arts institutions do is that we um, try to put out a product that we think people are going to want to consume. And I think that the shift that having art at events or having um, having food events or having events around food represents is not so much about consumption, but it's about participation. And people want to come into a room and into an institution where they feel like they understand what's going on. It's something that they do in their homes that they can relate to them. I think that can be around food, it can be around participatory art making, it can be around discussions, it can be around what we organize this afternoon. But I don't think it's selling out or sort of lowering ourselves to some standard that we as artists and as arts producers are trying to figure out how to get outside the mold of production and consumption. As a curator, presenter of events, owner of an institution, et cetera, et cetera, I totally get that. But like, you would call it kind of led me down this path of, um, I, I actually was at one point, I was going to ask if you if you feel like there's a privilege between the point of food and the point of art. And therefore, let me get down to this last bit. Is that the food that's being demoralized or de has been made less than? Because you're now a Food is a, is a facilitator for the art, and that that, that that in some way strikes you, any of you, as food creators, as like, hey, wait a minute, you're not a facilitator. Like, this, this is what we're doing is an art, and it should be equivalent to that. No, I mean, I don't see that as a food creator or a facilitator. What I think is that I think there's, I think it's like Jeff said, I think it's maybe not the right word, but I think that you guys have found that for some of the things that you're doing. 
know, part of it's about changing our audience and changing the way that we see them. And I think that was something that was really But just like limitations like that in general, I mean, there's so many different ingredients to take care of if you're, if you're, you can cut a lot of it out and you can just, it's so easy to, to do something in a way that you I just wanted to respond to the question of um, artists, and I think I agree with this, that food can be art in some sense, but art is not artistic moments, but I think at its core, I think food is nurturing, and in some ways it, it rises above the level of art, I and mean, it's it, we completely depend on it, and at its best, it's blissful and pleasurable and a conversation piece and a cultural event and a community and social event and, and an act of love, and that's, it, it goes beyond some, you know, it does something that in some ways art tries to do and can do at times, but can't always achieve in the same way. And, and at times it's not what art is supposed to do either. Uh, so I feel like it's in its own special realm, I guess, if you will. Yeah, actually, that's interesting. Because I kind of like, I agree and disagree with you because I sort of feel like um, artists nurturing and art is necessary and art is vital to survival and without it I can't live in the same way that food is. And so I appreciate those who are able to take the raw materials of that and create something extraordinary in the same way that I appreciate someone to take the raw materials of the stuff in your grandmother's backyard and turn it into to something extraordinary. So for me it's almost like that that place up there, that extraordinary thing, which I realize there's a lot of problematics around that, but for me, that's like what it's about. Yeah, it's, it's the sort of emotional spectrum. I'm trying to think of the last yeah. time I made a stew that made me sad. Yeah, right, right. Or do you know what I mean? I mean, the political parts of it, and that, you know, the, the sort of enemy cafe or that type of thing, which is political, that is artistic to me. But I'm trying to be sort of the overall emotional intention. I mean, when you cook, you're not trying to piss somebody off, I don't think, or to make them angry or to, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in, in that way, it's also, um, you know, cooking is dealing with taste and smell, and smell especially is coming from the senses, so it does have a really strong tendency to go to the emotions and kind of like that. Yeah, and it's really interesting that you said that you don't have to be able to cook 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 and one or two chances that you go back out of my life. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, can you tell us more about slow food? Uh, slow food, just in general. Um, uh, oh, okay, yeah. Slow food is the international movement started in Italy. Uh, uh, their focus these days is sort of on providing food that's good to make care. So it's so good eating. Uh, you know, Delicious, uh, clean, uh, you know, like if it's an animal, it's like you can't really raise it, it's a vegetable, it's like naturally grown, and fair, you know, and you're concerned with sort of labor practices and so forth. Um, so, promoting uh, foods that are in danger of uh, being lost to industrial agriculture and, and uh, development and so forth. Um, that's a big focus, but they focus on these other things too, but sort of focus on that sort of thing. Oh, yeah, sorry, I've been looking at the comments over here, yeah. Um, I, I came to food and art, uh, actually, through youth development and, uh, 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 through youth development and educational reform, working mostly in low-income communities of color, uh, here in San Francisco, for people to know, so on and so forth. And when I, when I hear these things, I, I bring it back to, well, what is who is the audience and what is the objective? Um, because for me, um, arts and food 
is the way in which, and pretty much the only way in which, I could bridge generations and cultures and languages. Um, specifically in a community organizing or an educational reform model, while being able to bring it down into a conversation that an average person can actually, quote unquote, average person can actually engage in. Um, and that was to be able to uh, even affect, you know, like school site plans and the educational reform actually happening at the school site and advocating for mental health services. And so when I, when I hear these things, I'm, I'm always, you know, bring, brought back to, well, how are we also, even looking around this room and noticing who's here and who's not here, how are we using these as opportunities to really bridge those things? Because in some ways, it's, it's a question of survival for a lot of these communities. But we're, we're, we're having to advocate, as we can see right now, so strongly for our education in schools, uh, even in the school day, in after school programs or other kinds of youth development programs. Uh, and so that, I just wanted to kind of add that, that educational layer in here, too, in that what food and arts does in terms of transcendence of education for communities that have normally been marginalized. Well, and I think one of the things we're trying to accomplish with this series of conversations is to kind of address that in a certain way about the centrality of art to our life in, a, in relationship to a number of other fields that are, are, are well known in the Bay Area for their innovation and all that, and, and you know where they're taking our society and how they're transforming the way we live and all that. The, a conversation we, it, my observation is we, we don't have all that often around art. Instead, we're just like begging for a few more bucks. Um, so what I, we want to do now is take a break. So I know you've been sitting in this really uncomfortable chair for a really long time. Um, so we're going to take about 15 minutes for you to relax. There's some food and drink, food and drink back there. Very, very. Uh, very basic. Um, before we break up, let me just say that when we come back, uh, we will have a, a, a visual presentation of some food making um, and a continued conversation. So if you're tempted to leave, don't. It's only going to get more interesting and it's already been amazing. Thanks.